you'll turn your Bible to the book of Genesis and uh, chapter number two, chapter number two of Genesis. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Why is there something rather than nothing? Because there could have been nothing, but instead there's something. And it's a question that when you're dealing with uh, this whole issue of defending the faith in this series is probably the most important question that you could ask. No big deal for you. If, if you're like the average person, when I ask you that question, it's like, okay, that's easy, God made it. But not everybody is, uh, is there. S some claim to be agnostic, some claim to be atheists, some claim to be believers, but haven't figured it out yet. This is probably one of the deeper questions you could ask. That verse that we just looked at in Genesis 2, verse 1, that, that verse says this, thus the heavens, that's first verse, chapter 2, after going through chapter 1, when God said, let there be, or even before that in the beginning, God created, and then he said, let there be, and then thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished and uh, translations the host of them it's not so much talking about angels or things like that in fact the Dewey Rhymes translation rather than saying the host of them says the furniture was finished so whatever God wanted on the earth he finished it at the beginning, at the beginning. And therefore, when you come up with the arguments about things like evolution or things about uh, that we all came from a monkey. Now, I know some of us act like it. say it as simple as anybody else. There's some things that are bigger than me. And if there is a universe that looks well designed, and it is. I mean, after all, the universe inside me is more than I can handle. I can see. Not only can I see, it's a miracle. But I see red dresses and I see white shirts. And, and I see folks with shoes. I see the truck coming at me. I better move. I see what I should eat and what I shouldn't. And then when I eat it, it goes in. I chew it. And just about six inches worth of Taste bud says, mm, that was good. Oh, ooh, that wasn't so good. And then when I chew it, it goes down and goes into my belly. And I say, yummy, from the tummy. And then the tummy sends it out through my blood. And it ministers to all of my cells. While it's sending what I need to all my cells, it picks up some garbage. Same blood brings it back into my system, gets rid of it as waste. Who on earth would dare use the same truck to deliver your groceries and pick up the garbage without getting either one of them mixed up? Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to be shouting hallelujah. There must be a God somewhere. Sits high and looks low. 
can discern and separate between. Why is there something rather than nothing? Proverbs chapter 8, let me read a couple of verses in verse number 22, Proverbs 8, 22. The Lord, watch this, possessed me at the beginning of his way before his works of old. I've been established from everlasting. From the beginning, watch, whoever this is, bad dude, from the beginning before there was ever an earth, when there was, <laughs> what? When there was no depths, I was brought forth before creation. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. I mean, you know, whoever, that's a bad dude, whoever did. I was there when, the, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman. Get that, get that, get that. As a master craftsman. What, what, why are you making an emphasis on this? Because we, we like to think of God saying, let there be like a big magic show. I mean, after all, he's God. He could say, let there be, and everything that is comes out of nothing. But here's what this verse shows us. It was not just power that created the heavens and the earth. It was engineering. It was smarts. It was math. It was God figuring. It was God working this thing when he made the heavens and the earth. Watch the rest of it. So th this whole idea, when he assigned to the sea its limits is in verse number uh, 29. Look at verse 30. Then I was beside him as a master craftsman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and my delight was with the sons of men. Now therefore listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways Hear instructions and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me. Listens to who? We'll see it. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. What's he talking about? Wisdom. Wisdom. So God made the heavens in, well, okay, just to make sure you get it, Proverbs chapter 3, just go right back to Proverbs chapter 3, look at verse number 19, Proverbs 3, verse 19, has the same reference point, has the same idea, the, the great wisdom of God in creating the heavens and the earth, that it wasn't a big magic show, Pew, spitting everything out. Watch how he did it. Two things you'll see in verse 19 of chapter 3 of Proverbs. The Lord listened to him by wisdom. Somebody say that with me. By wisdom. The Lord by wisdom. Say it again. The Lord by wisdom. Why is there something rather than nothing? Here's why. Because the Lord, which would be literally translated Jehovah, by wisdom. There it is. Chokma. You could translate that skill. By skill. By skill. The problem is that we, we see creation, whether it's a beautiful sunset or, or a majestic mountain, the roaring of the sea, the whistling of the wind, the falling of the avalanche. We see those things and we say, yeah, God, you know, you know God, he can do anything you want to do. It's true. That's true. But we miss the intricacy and the depth of what God did. When he made the heaven, he was thinking about this whole thing. I hope that bless you as much as it's blessed us around here. And uh, here in Southern California, where there are so many different ideas about eternity, spirituality, God even. 
even some different and varying strange ideas about Jesus. But the truth of the matter is, is really simple. He's God. And uh, you'll never get past that important point that the Corinthian letter states in the fifth chapter when he says, great is the mystery of godliness, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Let's keep going. There's a few other messages that'll bless you and uh, the questions that are there that make a whole lot of sense, like why is there something instead of nothing? Uh, there had to be a something in order for there to be anything. That something is eternal and we understand him as a person who we call God. Get with us on the next message.